and welcome to another episode of Ektas Replica Reviews. Kita! Yeah. Uh, Kita is a phrase in Japanese which means it is here or it has finally arrived. A phrase that is used numerous times in the television drama Densha Otoko. If you don't know what Densha Otoko is, I implore you to watch the series, to watch the television drama, check out the movie and read the novel adaptations. You will not regret it. But just as a little backstory, Densha Otoko or Train Man is based on a true story. Now while the actual identity of the persons involved is unknown, in the drama the main character is named Tiyoshi Yamada. He is the typical otaku, the typical otaku that is into anime and figures, but is also shy, soft spoken and just like you and me, has zero luck with the ladies. One day on the train on the way home from Akihabara, the mecca of otakudom, which I have personally been to myself, he witnesses a drunken man assaulting a beautiful girl. Going against his better judgement, he summons up all his courage to stand up for the girl. Later on, the girl sends him an expensive tea set as thanks, sharing his story on 2 Channel, a very very famous and popular Japanese BBS board. He receives help and advice from the anonymous users of 2 Channel to progress and advance his relationship. Truly the modern day Japanese love story, but that's not the main point of today's review. Today we'll be talking about Getsumento Heiki Mina. The reason that I talked about Densha Otoko is because Getsumento Heiki Mina is a metafictional anime series created specially for Densha Otoko. The producers went to great lengths to make this anime seem as real as possible with the creation of actual animation scenes animated by Gonzo, seen throughout the drama in the opening sequence, uh, which is also a reference to the Daikon 4 animation by the way, and numerous pieces of merchandise from posters to fans to cells to clocks and of course figures. The most prominent figure is owned by our main character and is located on his computer desk. Yamada is seen interacting with the figure during various scenes and is definitely one of the most prominent otaku related items in his room, aside from all the Gundam, Evangelion and well, Kirorogunso stuff. And of course, like any self-respecting otaku, I could not not own that figure. Unfortunately for me, the figure was one of kind to be exact, two of a kind figure made especially for the show and it cost 400,000 yen which I suppose is around 5,000 US dollars at this point in time. So the options available to me were to either get a replica raisin kit sold at a comic cat long past and painted up myself or to buy the closest mass-produced completed PVC figure by SEGA which you see right here in front of you because I am not a millionaire nor am I skilled at painting. While many figures were made of Mina by various companies, none of them came close to reproducing the pose of the Mina figure that Yamada had in his room. Sad to say, however, this figure is not 100% accurate as you will soon see. Ah uh, yes, I nearly did forget to mention that Mina was turned into a real anime series and said and really, and it's really unfortunate they decided to change the entire premise and plot of the story and it turned from an epic story of moon colonization, android bunny themed warriors and political space battles to uh, well, a silly edgy sports themed magical girl show. Such a shame, but such is life. Seriously, I am not kidding. Even the original plot to the 26th episode epic was drafted out and posted on the Densha Otoko website. This has kindly been translated by The Fool's Progress and you can go to the website to take a look at it along with a far better background and analysis of the show than I could ever give. First off, the figure is released by Sega and there are a whole set of similar price figures of characters from Mina sold separately. This one that's included with the limited edition set is supposedly a limited color version. From what I can tell after comparing pictures of the two, there are no differences between the two figures. Well, perhaps the color of their panties are different? I don't know, but we can only speculate. The box is your standard PS2 special SP box design with the window in the front to show you the special figure included. We also have illustrations of a number of the bunny themed androids that uh, well decorated around the box and uh, both sides of the box as you can see. And at the back of the box we have a lovely picture of Mina with the screen captures of the PS2 game but of course you know, who really cares about the PS2 game. So let's open this box up and take a look at the contents inside. 
Here's a little box opening tip for you in case you don't want to damage, risk damaging the top flap because sometimes the corners can get caught in the side flaps, especially when it comes to these kinds of boxes. If you take a look at the bottom, not many people will be, not many people will know to do this, but you can actually open the box from the bottom and it is far easier and less risky than opening the box from the top. Here's the box of the PlayStation 2 game, Getsumento Heiki Mina Futatsu no Project M, which Yes, I forgot to mention, it actually translates to Luna Rabbit Weapon Mina Futatsu no Project M, which I suppose would be the second Project M or Project M number 2, if my Japanese is anywhere up to par. Back of the PlayStation 2 game, we can throw this away. And take a look at the figure itself. It's your traditional limited exclusive design which ha with hardly any illustrations and it is completely in monochrome. Let's open this up, shall we? Plastic, plastic, figure out here. So here is Mina in all of her glory. And for a supposed price figure and freebie with the limited edition PS2 game, the figure is surprisingly well sculpted and is made from quite solid materials. Hmm, the legs especially seem to be made of solid P uh, ABS type material and doesn't and it doesn't seem that it will bend or warp over time and as you can see the figure is actually screwed to the base permanently. Colors wise even within the show itself there were a ton of coloring inconsistencies in the animated sequences where in the animated sequences Mina wore primarily pri Mina wore primarily red but for the figure, she was purple. The figure also had her eyes purple and her hair a far lighter shade of brown than it actually is. And in Sega's representation of the figure, we can see that it is far more anime accurate than the one in the show. Uh, sadly, to be honest, I would have really preferred it if you were accurate to the figure counterpart, the original figure counterpart of the show instead of the anime version because that's just how I like my replicas to be. Still, it is a very, very nice, nicely painted, nicely detailed figure and it is the red, red, we have red, red, red eyes with the darker brown hair and in, if you're just wondering what color her panties are, they are white. Pose and sculpt wise differences between this figure and her original drama counterpart are, well, her arms are closer together than the, what they were in the show. Her ears don't stand up as high as the ones in the show. And last but not least, her legs don't seem as dynamic or actiony or perhaps splayed far apart as they were in the show. Overall, I personally am delighted with my purchase. For some particular reason, this special edition box set of the PS2 game is going for ridiculously cheap prices on the secondary markets that sometimes go as low as $25. Now for that price, you can get your very own Mina figure that will perfectly complement any otaku room or computer desk. While the figure isn't that accurate to the original drama counterpart as I would have liked it, if you don't have any modeling skills or a ton of money to spare, this figure is the way to go. So, this is Zekta saying, see you guys in the next episode. <laughs> そのリハーサルで40万円もするこの人形にとんでもないハプニングが起こったんです。全爆笑したね。ほんとだ。やべ。ああ、本当だ。耳が折れてる。40万円もするのに。やべ。圧縮やっちゃいました。<笑><笑